Hello and welcome. When you see this topic, you will probably be asking yourself, why do I want to use Azure DevOps with OpenShift? Instead of answering this question now, let me show you my Azure DevOps CI CD pipeline and come back to this question. Before I begin, a few words on what Azure DevOps and OpenShift are. Azure DevOps consists of a number of cloud-based services. These services allow development and operations working together throughout the development lifecycle, increasing the speed and quality of software deployment. Red Hat OpenShift is the leading enterprise Kubernetes platform that automates deployment, management, and scaling of containerized applications. It has heightened security, and it provides many additional out-of-the-box capabilities. Over pain vanilla, do-it-yourself Kubernetes. Now, with the introduction of the two protagonists out of the way, let me turn your attention to my Azure DevOps pipeline. Before creating my pipeline, I watch a number of YouTube videos on the subject to ensure that I'm not repeating something that has been done time and time again. These videos that I watch have three things in common. One, they deploy a simple app, resulting in a single container. Two, they use OpenShift source to image toolkit to build container images on OpenShift. And three, they need to execute a number of commands on OpenShift before the pipeline will work. For example, they need to create new projects and manifests which define the resources required by the app. I want to do things differently. First of all, I'm going to build and deploy a more realistic app consisting of a Java microservice and a MySQL database. Two, I want to build a container image in the pipeline and push it directly to OpenShift image registry. And three, my pipeline takes care of all the tasks needed on OpenShift for the deployment. That means you don't have to do all this preparation work on OpenShift before you can execute the pipeline. Here is a pictorial representation of how my Azure pipeline works. You have a developer working on the code, pushing all the changes to Azure repo, which is our source control system. Changes in the repo triggers the pipeline. Oh, by the way, there are uh, two different versions of uh, Azure Pipeline, YAML Pipeline and the Kasek Pipeline. I'm using the newer YAML Pipeline, which is the recommended uh, pipeline to use by Microsoft. The first stage of the pipeline is the CI build stage. Builds the image, do some tests, and pushes it directly to the OpenShift image registry. Next stage is the CD depth. What it does is will create a new project on OpenShift to represent the development environment. And then it will create all these manifests, uh, including uh, uh, creating a relational database, MySQL, and then initialize it with the required database tables, uh, for the application, and then it will deploy both the MySQL database and the microservice app there. Next stage is the CD prod stage. This is very similar to the previous stage, with the exception that before it proceeds, it will ask for my approval. And this is what my pipeline does. It is time for a demo.
Let me get into Azure DevOps. This is my organization called Mr. Dreamboard, and I have two projects. So Kafka Sizing is the project I want to uh, run. Click on it. Now, let us get into pipelines. As I mentioned earlier, I'm using the uh, Azure repo. So let me click on it. So you can see that this is my repo. This is where my code reside. The application is a microservice called Kafka Sizing. Now let's get to the pipelines. Yes, I did it. So I'm using a YAML pipeline here. So you can see uh, this pipeline has three different stages. So let me just run it. And before I do that, let me just uh, also have the uh, OpenShift console screen available. The pipeline will create two projects to simulate different environments. One is called the dev environment. The other is called the prod environment. You can see that uh, before I run the pipeline, there are no such uh, projects on OpenShift. Now let us run the pipeline run so you can see there are three bubbles there the first stage is CI stage followed by uh, CD dev and then the CD prod stage let's have a look so it's running all these uh, different steps and tasks let me speed up the video a bit Now it has finished the first stage, the CI build stage. It has run some tests, uh, created the image, and pushed it to the OpenShift registry. Let's have a, look, have a look at some of the information that you can get from this particular uh, CI stage. So you can see that there's a test. So I performed two tests, and they all succeeded. Let's get back here. And for each stage of, actually for each task, you can click on it and see what has been going on. And then you can actually bring up the wall lock as well. So you can see all these commands that has been executed as well. You can see that is actually running the deployment, the first stage deployment. So, and you can actually see that it has created a project are called dev environment in here because it does not exist. Let's see how it's going. Oh, it's actually finished running it. Right, so let's get back here to this diagram. You can see that it's at the third stage waiting to be approved because normally you want to have uh, someone to approve uh, the deployment before you go go to uh, production. So if I click here, review, and then I just say approve. Then it will start the deployment to the production stage. Now you can see that it has created a port environment. Let's get into the deployment environment why the, it is a uh, the dev environment, why it's uh, doing the deployment in the port. You can see that you have actually created two containers running. One is running the microservice, Kafka sizing, the other container is running MySQL, which is uh, required by Kafka sizing. You can click on this to actually jump to the application itself. So this is Kafka sizing application. Now let's get back to the pipeline. So it has finished running the production pipeline. So let me go back to projects, get into 
plot environment. Again, you will see that it has two containers running in there. And I can again jump to the microservice. Now that, that is all good. So the, the first time we run it, it will create the uh, projects and deploy all these applications. I want to change something uh, in the source code and push it back to the uh, uh, repo. So since the pipeline is listening on that, so it will automatically start a new pipeline. So this is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to uh, use command line instead of the git uh, uh, plugin in here. So I just want to, uh, first of all, do a git pull up today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the version number in here version to 1.0.3 to 1.0.4 save it it's done let's get back to the you can see that a new pipeline is running triggered by the change that I made. Now let us get back to the uh, microservice application. So you can see that this is uh, what, where we left it. So it's version 1.03 in the test environment. Let's refresh the screen and see what happens. Now you can see that it's been updated to 1.0.4. It has actually recreated the image and we deployed it into the uh, test environment. Let's check the uh, production environment as well. Refresh it. Again, it's uh, updated to 1.0.4. And that is the pipeline I want to show you. Now, let me get back to the question, why use Azure DevOps with OpenShift? First of all, Azure DevOps provides a popular and mature cloud-based DevOps toolset. If the number of questions asked on Stack Overflow is any indication of popularity, then Azure DevOps has 22.8K questions asked compared to one of its competitors, AWS Code Pipeline, which has 1.1K questions asked. And Azure DevOps is popular, mature. In Microsoft alone, there are over 80,000 internal users. And in my YAML pipeline, I've only used two of the five Azure DevOps services, namely Azure Repo and Azure Pipelines. I haven't touched on the other three. Azure Bots, which provide collaboration and visualization tool uh, to manage your agile uh, development process. Azure Test Pens, which helps you manage your test requirements. And Azure Artifacts, which provide you with a place to store your packages so that you can share them among your projects. Azure DevOps comes with a large number of ready-to-use built-in tasks for your YAML pipelines in different categories. For example, in the build category, there are 25 tasks, utility, 41, and so on and so forth. What if I cannot find a task that I I want to use, you may ask. Don't worry, because Azure DevOps also operates a market pace with 1,700 plus additional tasks. Imagine 1,700 plus tasks. There's bound to be one that you can use. And by the way, I'm using OpenShift extension 
in my YAML pipeline, which is actually installed from the marketplace, and it is free. It helps you build test applications written in different programming languages and deploy to different vendor services. This makes it a very versatile and valuable tool for enterprises that started out with Azure services and later on branched out to use other cloud vendor services. For such enterprises, it is highly likely that they are using Azure DevOps. This leads to my last point. For the enterprises I mentioned in my previous point, if they should come to realize the advantages of using OpenShift, for example, OpenShift is cloud vendor agnostic, uh, it provides a consistent experience across different clouds, and it provides many additional useful out-of-the-box services over plain vanilla do-it-yourself Kubernetes. These enterprises can consolidate their workload running on multi-vendor services to OpenShift, for example, uh, other vendors, Kubernetes services, serverless, etc. And using Azure DevOps will smooth their transition because they don't have to learn a totally new tool for DevOps. And this comes to the end of my presentation. Thank you for watching and take care.